In this video, we're going to be discussing the Arizal. <clears throat> Rabbi Yitzchak ben Shlomo Luria, also known as the Ari, the Lion, the Arizal, the Lion of Blessed Memory, the Arizal Hachai, the, uh, the, the, or the Ari Hachai of the living Arizal. Um, he was born in the year 1534 in Jerusalem and passed away in Sfat in the year 1572 at the young age of 38. He did not live a very long life, but extremely impactful one. Um, he was born in Jerusalem, and uh, his family at a young age moved him to Egypt, where he studied under the Radvaz and the author of the Shittim Kubatset and other great uh, Egyptian rabbis. Um, he spent most of his life probably there in Egypt, and he only moved to Sfat about two or three years before his passing. Um, he uh, studied uh, Kabbalah and Talmud over there. He was a great Kabbalist and Talmudist, uh, though not much uh, is extant of his halachic works. Um, he was a tremendous uh, genius, and uh, he came to Sfat at the end of the life of the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, and part of the tradition says that when he saw um, the funeral of Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, he saw a, filler, uh, a pillar of fire following the casket. Um, at that time, he, the reason he came to Sfat is that he understood that his main disciple was going to be Rabbi Chaim Vital, um, who ends up becoming one of his chief disciples, and he joins this, this Kabbalah, um, this Kabbalistic group, and, um, and he becomes a, very soon becomes the leader of this Kabbalistic group, with Rabbi Chaim Vital being his chief student and transcriber. Uh, he told Rabbi Chaim Vital that he was the only one who was allowed to transcribe his works. The Arizal felt that his uh, he had a very hard time communicating because his brain was so uh, it was so beyond uh, communication. It was just very deep thoughts and try, had a hard time communicating them. And writing was even more difficult. Therefore, very few things are extant of his writing. We'll talk about in a second some of his writings. Um, so the Rabbi Chaim Vital becomes the chief transcriber of his works, and there becomes some debate amongst Kabbalists of what are acceptable uh, works to study the Arizal. There are some works of the Arizal that are, some of them are from the other students of his, written down, and uh, some people, the, the purists, say we can only study um, what later becomes known as the Shemona She'arim, the Eight Gates, transcribed by, by Rabbi Chaim Vital, Kabbalah's Harachav, which means the Kabbalah of Rabbi Chaim Vital, an acronym. Some say that you can rely on some of the other works that include other teachings from other students. Um, it's beyond the scope of this video, but let us uh, just say that the in the Hasidic, uh, the Baal Shem Tov and the Hasidic tradition is that we do uh, study um, the, some of the Arizal's works from the Eitz Chaim and Pre-Eitz Chaim, which includes um, some, uh, besides being uh, written by Rabbi Chaim Vital, also have some sayings and teachings from other uh, students. The Arizal becomes this almost mythical figure, uh, though he was a real person, he really lived, and beyond large in life, I guess is the right way of saying it, um, just some of the things that he did, um, he identified many grave sites of great rabbis at that time. You have to understand, post the destruction of the temple, men, there were very few people, Jewish people who lived in the land of Israel for many years, and many graves of great sages of the of the Second Temple era and the post-Second Temple era, such as um, the grave sites of some of the great rabbis of the Mishnah of the Talmud, um, were not identified, and he went around and identified them. Another tradition of the Arizal um, is... The, the, that we or most Jewish people follow is the tradition of Kabbalah Shabbat. We talked about in a previous video, um, the, uh, the Rabbi Shlomo Alkabetz being the author of the Chadodi, and Rabbi, the Rabbi Isaac Gloria, the Arizal, really developed this idea of going out into the fields and accepting Shabbat. Uh, that whole idea of accepting Shabbat before the, the evening service was developed mostly by the Arizal. Just as an aside, an interesting story that goes along with that was that he, um, one time he told his followers uh, that as they're going out to the fields to accept Shabbat, that he says, um, you know, let us, maybe we should do uh, you know, Shabbat in Yerushalayim. And they understood that to get to Yerushalayim was impossible at that time, so there would be some sort of miraculous, you know, journey that they would go on. And they, they said, we have, to, we have to go ask our wives. We're going to go spend Shabbat in a different city. And he said, oh, you blew it. If we would have... If you would have said yes, you would have went to Jerusalem and we would, could have brought Mashiach. And uh, 
you know, kind of the million dollar question as well. Of course, they have to ask their wife. You can't just, you know, ditch your ditch your wife for Shabbat. But um, it seemed that that Rizal was saying, you know, if you're going to be, we're going to do something of this magnitude, we're going to be, you know, warriors for God. Um, we're going to have to kind of break the rules a little bit, not break the rules, but, uh, you know, self-sacrifice, I guess is the right way of saying it. On the contrary, one of the ideas of that result is to bring the halacha and Kabbalah can have no, can have no contradiction. So even though there are many Kabbalistic practices that are different in the Zohar that are different than, um, that are different than what's born in the Talmud, there has to be a synthesis and everything has to fit. That is one of the teachings of that result. Um, many customs of the Arizal, uh, including bringing your, uh, we said we're going to Meron for Lagba Omer, uh, people cutting hair, the first haircut at Meron for Lagba Omer. Um, uh, for example, also cutting the fact that people trim their payas, uh, right? The some has, some uh, Hasidic groups or, or Jew Jewish traditions are that they let their payas, their side locks, they let them grow long. Uh, the, um, the, the Arizal cut his payas uh, for Kabbalistic reasons. Um, He's also developed eventually many customs, for example, giving uh, tzedakah, charity before davening, um, giving, uh, saying before prayer, Harini Mikabel, that we accept upon yourself to love your fellow Jew. Um, that was a, a, a custom of that Rizal that's become mainstream. Um, many other customs and ideas of that Rizal have become a very important part of Judaism, even though he didn't live that long ago. Um, another thing of... Uh, uh, Another important part of that Rizal's legacy is his Kabbalistic system. We discussed previous in the previous video about Rabbi Moshe Cordovero and his uh, Kabbalistic system. That Rizal took it a step further, and students of that Rizal, including uh, the the Hasidic movement, really explained that the difference between Luriana Kabbalah and Cordovarian Kabbalah is not really a difference in that they disagree necessarily, but it took it a step further. And that Rizal is kind of giving a more depth to Cordovarian Kabbalah. And even though there are things that seem to be contradictory, they are kind of on a different realm, so to speak. Again, beyond the scope of this video, going into the exact differences and, and the details of that, but um, important to note. Um, and in fact, some students of, including Rabbi Chaim Vital, his main student, felt that he could not understand that Rizal's Kabbalah. It was too deep for him. And that Rizal took him one Saturday night, he took him to the Kinneret. Uh, Tzfat oh, is right next to the Kinneret uh, River, lake, sea, whatever you call it. And he gave him a cup of water on Saturday night and he told him to drink it. And he said that on a Saturday night, the, you're able to access the Be'er Shem Miriam, the water that was in the, with the Jewish people in the desert that was in the merit of Miriam. And that is accessible on Saturday night. And that Rizal knew exactly where it was. And he gave him this cup of water. And since then, the Rabbi Chaim Vital's mind opened up and he was able to understand. Uh, some people were not, uh, could, could not understand the Rizal's Kabbalah, including the Alshech, uh, Rabbi Moshe Alshech, who uh, one time came to the came to the uh, class of the Arizal, and every time he would come, he would fall asleep. And uh, the Arizal told him, your soul is not meant for the mystical side, the secrets of the Torah, but for the expansion of the Torah. And the al Shekh wrote many uh, wonderful books uh, expounding on the, the on the Torah, but not in a mystical way, in the same way the Arizal. Um, other things that the Arizal uh, accomplished um, was, uh, was, again, in these short two years, was bringing was that he said that uh, he had this this important statement was mitzvah is gal zosa chachma that at this point it's a mitzvah to reveal the secrets of the Torah that until that point uh, as we discussed there always was a tradition of Kabbalah we've discussed many rabbis over the centuries who always had this tradition of Kabbalah passed down one person to the next but it was always studied in a quiet way it was always an elite group it never really was. Uh, for everyone. Um, the Arizal changed that. And he said, it, in this generation, on the contrary, it's no longer, it's dangerous to keep it quiet. And it becomes a mitzvah and an and obligation to study Kabbalah. And um, the Hasidic movement took that to the next level, really democratizing Kabbalah. Um, another important, uh, I shouldn't say Kabbalah, but Jewish mysticism. Um, another important teaching of the Arizal is the idea of simsumim. Simsum means to... Um, Concealment. That the idea is that in order for in order for godliness to be revealed in this world, um, there has to be kind of uh, a blockage, something to block 
or that the light could come through, but not as strong as it was before. In other words, that if godliness is to be revealed in our world in a the, in the way it is revealed in heaven and in, in the spiritual realms, this physical world would cease to exist. So there has to be some sort of uh, there is kind of the idea of God removing Himself from this world and allowing light back in, and there becomes a debate amongst Lurianic Kabbalistic students of does that mean that God actually removed Himself from the world and then let it back in only a little bit amount of light, or does it is it kind of a uh, an illusion, right? And this becomes a big debate amongst the Hasidic movement versus the Vilna Gaon. Um, you know, a couple hundred years later, about 150, 200 years later, is this debate and the Hasidic movement took the approach that God is everywhere and that these ideas of God concealing himself is not to be taken literally, but that this is an illusion that it looks like God makes it looks like he's not really here, but really God is here. God is everywhere. Um, as the song goes, um, that is another important development of Luriana Kabbalah. And there are many, many more beyond the scope of this video. Um, but the, what's really important as the legacy of that result is is number one the synthesis of judaism with kabbalah that this was not going to be some sort of you know you know separate stream um and making making sure that kabbalah would now uh be revealed um and in these short two years that he led this group um from when he came from egypt until his passing in Sfat, where he's buried um he, he changed the Jewish world. Um, many, there are many, uh, today there are many Sidurim that are based on that result, including the Siddur that the Rabbi Shneer Zaman of the Adi, the Alter Rebbe of Chabad, that he developed was based on that result. Uh, that result's writings, what's called the writings that result mostly transcriptions. Um, there are songs that are, some of the original writings that result actually preserved is, there are three songs that we sing fr Friday night, Shabbat uh, morning, and Shabbat afternoon uh, by the third meal of Shabbat, um, those three songs are actually written by the Arizal in his, 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 his uh, uh, very Kabbalistic songs in Aramaic, and those songs actually have his name signed into them. Every word starts Yitzchak ben Shlomo, Luria, or Yitzchak Luria. So um, uh, again, so that with something that many Jewish people sing those songs, Friday night, Shabbat morning, etc., and you know, based on these are the teachings and the writings of that Rizal, um, as well as his, the Luriana Kabbalah becomes the basis for the Hasidic movement. The Hasidic movement took the ideas of Luriana Kabbalah, of the idea that we have to bring uh, godliness, reveal godliness in this world, and, and that is the ultimate, is to, that is the ultimate how we're going to bring Mashiach, etc. These are all ideas that the Hasidic movement adopted, and also the idea of that it's a mitzvah to reveal Jewish mysticism that is a idea that the Hasidic movement adopted. Um, and uh, these ideas eventually became, um, the, the Hasidic movement eventually developed and spread these ideas throughout Eastern Europe and eventually till today, um, Lurian Kabbalah continues to flourish. Um, I hope I didn't miss everything. There's so much to talk about about that Rizal. Um, let's kind of give you an overview of who he was and his importance. Um, if there's something I missed, you think I should have said, any mistakes that I made, uh, please put in the comments. We love feedback. And thank you very much for joining. And we'll see you next time.